Ganya Sasano closed her eyes and relaxed. It was a brief respite, but the days after preterm tended to be uneventful. The parents had departed, the students were settling into their rooms, and open auditions began canvassing the first years into joining the various academy clubs and activities. The student committees elected the year before reconvened to organise and discuss ideas for the coming school year. It was a time of new experiences for the first years, while the girls in the upper classes renewed friendships that might last a lifetime. With classes set to begin right after Shell, the week was the last bastion of quiet before the term began in earnest. Ganya sipped a glass of ubeki juice and looked over the columns from her office window. It was late in the morning, and the first students were finally beginning to venture out. Last night's beach party was a tradition, but it kept all the girls out till the wee hours of the morning. The parties rarely got out of hand with the fourth year students keeping watch, and they served as an occasion where the first years were sized up, sorted out, and poured into new social circles. Everyone had a good time. It also meant a rare morning where Garnia could sleep in, a well-earned calm after the storm that was pre-term day, and she took another sip while gazing over the campus green. The late nights trailing after student parties were a duty for the youngest faculty, and a feeling of satisfaction stole over her as she raised a toast to the window. It's good to be the head administrator. The daily routine of classes tended to be an easy rhythm, only marred by some students' personal upset, and after two decades at the academy, it all seemed to blend together. The problems of a student 20 years ago resurfacing every few years on another new face. As the years rolled on, issues that once seemed new and immediate had become variations on a theme. Every year, fresh faces enter their first year, filled with hopes and expectations. Every year saw another class become graduates, ready to face the challenges of their lives, their houses, and the empire. She found her mind wandering towards retirement. Not yet, but a few more years. There seemed to be no new problems under the sun, and when that happened, it was time to think about letting fresher faces have their day. The morning was far too nice for such thoughts, and watching the sun clear away the morning mists lingering around the campus green gave Ganya a deep satisfaction. This was her empire, and on a morning this lovely, it was impossible not to enjoy being his empress. Only one spectre loomed, and as the clock neared the top of the hour, her despatch chimed. Ganya set aside her glass and rang out to her secretary. Yes, Pelly? Clark Gilton from Capital News is here for her appointment, head administrator. Shall I send her in? Yes, thank you, Pelly. Ganya closed her desk screen and finished smoothing her school jacket just as Pelly opened the door. She had not been clear on what to expect and studied her guest as the young woman entered and bumped her fist cordially. Miss Gilton, it's a pleasure to meet you. It was not a lie, of course, but she smiled graciously as if her guest were her sole concern in the world. She'd been expecting something like this ever since Admiral Tejo's unfortunate incident during commencement, and it was simply best to get it over and done with. Won't you please have a seat? As Gilton moved to one of the chairs, Ganya settled behind her desk once more. It was a power move, but while a visit from the press was expected, that wasn't the same as a visit to being welcomed. It's very rare that we can entertain anyone from Capital News. How can I be of help? That's very kind, Head Administrator. I appreciate your time. Ganya couldn't help smiling as the petite reporter sat down. The woman looked younger than most of her graduates. She was cute. Her manner perky and unprepossessing, as she eagerly leaned forward. Of course, this doesn't seem to be the start of an ordinary year for the Academy. It seems to have already had its ups and downs. Please call me Garnia, she replied, but allowed her smile to take on a look of curious expectation. 
Guoten's approach was less than subtle, but didn't necessarily mean it was blunt. The woman hadn't taken out a recorder, as yet, after all. And it's certainly true that every year has its unique challenges. I presume you want a statement on the unfortunate incident on preterm night? The Academy has nothing but our sincerest thanks to Admiral Teiju for donating her time. While the evening didn't go as planned, nothing will mar the memory of her stirring address to our first-year students and their families. I'm sure that's true, and Capital News wants to make sure any story gets as much or as little consideration as is due. No one wants to damage the Academy's reputation. Ganya looked the reporter in the eye and assessed that. Capital News was never going to paint an unflattering picture of the military. Even with a retired admiral, it was an unquestionable truth. Still, the petite woman hadn't asked to start a recording, and her smile lost its warmth in favour of something more... satisfied. No, we wouldn't. Empress Zarika's Academy has a distinguished heritage, and its alumni include some of the most important houses of the Empire. Garnier let the hint drop like a heavy fishing weight. It wasn't an implication she usually pulled out of her arsenal lightly, but it never failed to signal that if a conversation wasn't over, it was heading in that direction and being shown where the door was. And I'm sure nothing ever could affect that heritage. It's more a question about the Academy today that I wanted to discuss. Discussion. But I notice you've neither taken down my statement nor have you asked to record. Might I ask what it is you do want to discuss? Well, it's a case of what Capital News wants. Allowing the moment to drag, Garnier let her smile fade and looked at the reporter thoughtfully. Steepling her fingers, her tone took on the edge of a teacher addressing an undeserving student. Miss Gilton, you've cast your line and it's becoming quite clear that it has a hook on it. Hedging about after your opening remarks does you no credit, so either set your line or call it a day. The little reporter wilted, but to her credit, she rallied rather quickly, looking rather more determined. Well, that is... The point? Ganya let a hint of exasperation mix in with the note of disapproval. Miss Gilton... Capital News always gets to the point, even if you don't seem fully prepared to do so. Right, uh... Hewton looked ready to flounder, as uncertainty skidded across her face. She rallied a second time, and Ganya gave her points for tenacity, if nothing else. Central News has two options. We could bury any story about Admiral Tejo's... Um, unfortunate incident. On the other hand... We could mention it while exploring the changing quality of education. Things like the presence of a human on your faculty might cause some viewers alarm. There might even be speculation on how well the academy is caring for the student's education. Well, I will certainly give you high marks for candor. And I notice you had the grace not to call our professor the alien from the sex planet. However, Empress Zarika's Academy for Young Ladies has a long history in being at the forefront of education. The inclusion of classes on humanity is no more controversial than when we first taught about the Rakiri. We have a time and a tradition of preparing our students to deal with the most demanding challenges facing the Empire. Ganya allowed a measure of time to pass, so the weight of the statement would fall into place, raising an eyebrow before carrying on. It has always been deemed essential in preparing future leaders to handle the issues presented by the integration of a new species into the Imperium. Respectfully, we both know that's not the only view people may take in this particular case. Humanity isn't at all like the Rakiri or any other race, and Capital News wants to work with you and ensure we present a... um... favourable interpretation. Ganya considered the situation as she studied the reporter. Despite the hint of repercussions, the young woman wasn't backing down and looked more resolved than ever. Ganya had very little to personally fear from an unfavourable news report, but if matters fell back upon Mivea, that was something she wasn't prepared to accept. If her protégé wasn't next in line for head administrator, 
she was well on track to be the one that followed. While Tom Warwick could be sent back to Earth, an unflattering story from Capital News could irrevocably damage Miv's future prospects. Uncertainty was long forbidden from crossing Ganya's features. It was a useful talent for surviving when dealing with the nobility, but there was a difference between standing firm and uncompromising stupidity. It seemed like a good time to cast a net of her own. You have presented me with a set of options, and one is far more acceptable. However, you've not presented the condition for choosing between them. Ganya Sasano made her living by running an academy, and reading people was a skill she'd honed like an agent of the interior. Determination was still written on the little reporter's face, but so was hope, and perhaps even a trace of desperation. Brushing past hints to drop the matter might mean she was brash, but it seemed increasingly likely Gellert Gulton had a personal stake involved. Central News feels that the inclusion of a human on the Academy's faculty is a wonderful opportunity to show how they're fitting in as citizens of the Empire. Rather than creating questions about the matter, we thought it might be a good chance to embed a reporter, that is, for me, to document the Academy's inclusive policies by spending a year undercover as part of the incoming students and sitting in his classes. Please, think of this as a wonderful opportunity. I'm certain you think of it that way, floated through Ganya's mind. Still, she'd had a call from CN's central desk. Capital News had taken an interest, and since that interest wasn't going to go away by itself, Ganya had to consider the options. Aside from idle talk between the families, the situation with Admiral Tejo could quietly vanish. It placed Tom Warwick in a position to sink or swim according to his abilities, but that was true regardless, and thus far he performed well. Eccentrically, perhaps, but surely learning about the norms and curiosities of his species was the point. Most of all, a gracious acquiescence kept Miver safe and preserved the reputation of the Academy. As situations went, it wasn't unpalatable. Garnia had all the contacts she needed to end the career of a junior reporter, but just at the moment it seemed like a far better alternative not to start down that road. It wasn't like a human on the faculty was going to remain a secret. Any effort to fend off capital news would lead to diminishing returns, and there were more than a few impediments. However, she didn't have to just roll over and accede too easily. You're clearly too old to pose as a first-year student, though I suppose it's not unthinkable you could be transferring in during your second year. Hope blossomed across the reporter's face, but Ganya was far from done. And you're late. You'll have to take whatever dorm room we have left. That's not a problem. If you're here posing as a student, you take all the classes, a full workload for the term, and I expect to see the proper effort. If you fail midterm exams, you will be removed. If I indulge you, that is to say, central news, in disrupting my school year, then I expect you to both perform like any other student and blend in accordingly. It's of the utmost importance for you to take that to heart. That's not a problem either. I was top of my class for media studies and graduated from Soki Pan Technical in the top ten for my year. Ganya's eyebrow nearly twitched at the name of the school and filed that away for the next time she met with Vemi Rasani. Registration starts tomorrow. You will need to be present and ready to begin. I have my bags on the transport. Ganya nodded, as if weighing the matter fairly, but waved her hand to the campus outside her window. Miss Gulton, by Imperial Writ, the Academy is an institution for educating and cultivating the nobility. While it's clear you're in earnest about this, I'm not sure you appreciate the nuances involved in campus life. The girl, and in truth, Garnier was coming to see her that way, looked pensive for a moment, but nodded. My co-grandmother has a title. Um, it's nothing that will pass down to me, but I learned how to behave when we visited. I see, 
replied Ganya, looking at Gulton. Some of these girls will eat you alive. I want it understood here and now that I will tolerate no possibility of allowing your work to become a smear piece. You are here to document, and you will give Professor Warwick the opportunity to teach. Am I entirely clear upon that point, Miss Gulton? Yes, Ganya, thank you. I... that is... Central News wanted to extend its appreciation for this opportunity. Students will address me as Head Administrator, Miss Gutan. From the moment you walk out of this office, you will rise or fall according to your achievements, and should you fail, that rests entirely upon you. Ganya watched as that seemed to strike a chord. It was the first time the little reporter actually quailed. Reaching over to her desk and hitting the comm, Ganya arched an eyebrow at the girl. Pelly? Yes, Head Administrator. Please have Elia from admissions come to my office in ten minutes. We have a late transfer admission that needs immediate attention, and I need to have a word. Also, ask facilities to ready another room. Certainly. Will there be anything else? Yes, Pelly. Please ask Deliri to drop by when it's convenient. The student has a major and needs entry in a particular class, if she's going to meet requirements. So we need that sorted before registration opens tomorrow. Shuffle my afternoon appointments. Oh, and while I'm thinking about it, schedule Professor Duvari for 15 minutes at the end of the day. Apparently, there were still new things under the sun. But as Ganya listened to Elia on the on the pad, that no longer seemed like a blessing. No... No, I understand it's crowded. We always have crowds for the popular classes. No, no, it is not a riot. It is very specifically not a riot. The students are just excited. Ganya listened for a moment, feeling a headache coming on. All right, I'll grant that they're more than a little excited, but two fights and some hair pulling is not a riot. What? No, don't get flustered. Just explain that the Imperial Studies Department has a class limit of eight students to a professor. It's not that popular a major, and those classes usually only draw six girls every... What? Yes, I know some of those girls are very well connected, but it's a class like any other. Ganya hunched down in her chair and rubbed her forehead, while she tried to make out Elias' reply. The noise in the background was rising to a disturbing level. Very well. Tell them that we're going to allow 12 girls into the class, and only 12. Just sort them by the ones that are in Imperial Studies to begin with. Yes, I know I just said it's not the biggest department, but register the girls by major first. After that, just add in ones with the highest grade point averages, or whatever you think works best. Treat it as you would an overbooked class, Elia. No, just take all the names and sort them out later. I'll talk to Mavera about adding more students into the class for next term. But for now, just keep things at registration under control. For the last time, it's not a riot! Ganya could feel the headache coming faster and sighed. Yes, we'll talk later. Goodbye, Elia. Ganya set her on the pad down and swiveled her chair to look out her office window. It was a good view over the green down to the ocean, and the administration building lay just off to the right. Registration usually took three days, but the crowd outside the building seemed somewhat robust, while somewhere in that throng was a reporter for Capital News. Ganya set down her usual glass of juice. It wasn't sitting well on her stomach this morning. Leaning back over to her desk, she stamped at the comm. Pelly. It only took a moment before her secretary responded. Yes, head administrator? Please ask Professor Pelavon to come over to my office when it's convenient. Certainly, head administrator. Shall I give a reason? Yes. Garnier pursed her lips and let her stomach settle. Tell her we're expanding the size of her class somewhat, and we need to discuss our options for next year. Her eyes flickered over to the screen on her desk. Also, tell her I need to discuss her expense report. Yes, Head Administrator. Thank you, Pelly. Ganya turned off the comm and took another sip of her juice. 
The mug was doing its best to keep it cold, but it still didn't taste right. At least talking with Miv wouldn't be a problem. Taking the class from 8 to 12 was only reasonable under the circumstances. Anyway, she still needed to ask why the expense showed 500 credits for a couch. It was late afternoon by the time Mavera arrived at Tom's apartment. They had planned to go over the student biographies over dinner, once registration closed in their class. However, she seemed unusually flustered as he brought her inside. Closing the door behind Mavera, he leaned up and kissed her before taking the folders. Crossing over to settle on the couch, Tom looked over the list on top and flipped through the folders. There were files in each student with their class histories, grades, information on family, emergency contacts, and any number of details. But the summary showed a picture of each girl, giving names, extracurricular activities, any disciplinary issues, and notes. Students. 1. Severe Detain. Diving Team. None. 2. Jaxmi Chalksa. History Club. None. 3. Kalak Uton. None. None. Transfer student in second year. 4. Kamara Kerbal. Student Council. None. 5. Kaslin Kerbnal. Academy Orchestra. None. 6. Nesta Roche. None. None. 7. Melondi Sandoka. Choir. None. 8. Disala Sahat. Diving team. None. 9. Belda Sosona. History club. None. Parents reside off world. 10. Deshin Tosema. History Club. None. Honor Student. 11. Letsi Trolangi. Media Club. None. 12. Priscilla Tassain. Debate Club. None. Parents reside off world. So, what's with the diving team? he said as he looked at the first picture. The girls were all roughly between 18 and 20 earth years old, and as far as looks were concerned, they were all pretty enough to fill out a pin-up calendar. Telling them apart as students was another matter, and he looked over the first face, which seemed leaner. The girl's hair crows cropped in a pixie cut. I've seen posters for it all over campus. Competitive diving is the biggest sport on shill, followed by swimming, Mavere said as she sank down into the couch with a leaf. After working with Tom for months, she took his questions in stride, and he waved his hand as if asking for something more. Athletes compete by the style of their dive, the depth they reach, their time underwater. Making the team is a big achievement, and competitions between the schools are a huge draw. Tom felt himself blanch as he digested that, recalling his explorations around the academy grounds. I... Wait. I mean, I saw the glass walls and the seats below the water, but that pool was deep. Mivet gave him a knowing smile and stretched a bit. You'll see for yourself. Training starts next week and everyone comes by to watch. Tom looked back at the first picture and tried to shake his disbelief. It was one thing knowing that the Chauvanti got their start along the oceans instead of out on the plains, so diving made as much sense for a Shivanti sports as running after a ball did for a human. Seeing the difference in action, though... Damn, this I have to watch, he said, as he moved to the next folder. I see we got the Chelksler girl. I thought they were a nice family. After a cursory examination of the next two folders, he stared at the next two profiles. Kaslin and Kamara Kerbal... Oh, it's just my bad, but I never even thought about Shilvanti having twins. Ah, those two. It's not common, but it does happen. 
I had them in an introductory class last year. They're a handful, but they're both very bright students. Tom drew in a deep breath as he looked at the pictures again. Even in a race of beautiful women, the girls were stunning, and for the life of him, Tom couldn't tell the two apart in their photos. They even posed for the camera the same. God, if I were 21 again, this is a test I would surely fail. Given Mivere's explanation about the diving team, the next three folders seemed relatively unremarkable, but he looked over the summary again. Two students from Offworld, he said, flipping through their files. Oh, yes. Belda Sassona is from Willist. It's an agricultural world only a few light years from Shill. Prasala Tassane is from Atherton, which is a sector capital along the Alliance border. It's a very important world in the Imperium. Tom frowned briefly, as a thought crossed his mind. I'm kind of surprised. There are a lot of worlds in the Empire, and they all seem to have nobles there. Why aren't there more students with homes off of Shill? After setting down the files, Tom looked up at Mivere, who quirked her mouth, thoughtfully. Because of the Imperial writ, most of the capital families try to enrol their daughters, and with only 300 new students a year, the AYL is very competitive. I'm not surprised to see a girl from Atherton, but Willis? I don't know Belda Sosona, but she either has very good graces, or very good connections. Tom digested that for a moment. After getting through preterm night, the level of competition wasn't nearly as surprising as it would have been before. And one honor student, he said, picking out the folder. Mevere smiled as he glanced back. Deshin, yes, a very bright girl. She's a pleasure to have in class. Almost too keen sometimes, but definitely one of our most gifted second years. You'll enjoy her. Tom tapped the folders back into a neat pile on the table and left them there. All right, so we have Shell to relax a bit and get ready, and then off we go. It's going to be your first day, but you're going to be fine, Tom. Mivere looked happy, and Tom gave her a grin, before reaching down beside the couch to draw forth the package he'd kept aside, since they left Earth. Well, I hope you're right. One way or another, we're going to find out. Anyway, I wanted to give you a gift tonight. He pressed the package into Mivere's hands and rose from the couch, avoiding looking back for her reaction. Go try it on in the bedroom while I finish making dinner, Miv. I've been waiting to see it on you, he said, as he waved towards the back room. I've been enjoying the suits you had made for me, and fair is fair. He walked into the kitchen counter, but leaned back out to cast a look back at Mivere. She was turning the package over in her hands like it was going to explode. Oh, come on. Don't tell me you looked up what it was. What? No. Mavere shot up from the couch like it caught fire. No, I didn't look it up, I promise. <laughs> Damn, she's cute when she's flustered. Tom smiled at her once more, before heading back into the kitchen. He'd already been getting dinner ready when Mavere arrived, and he'd already drawn out some of his hoard of pasta. Moving the pot over to heat, he looked over the other ingredients before calling back. Well then, go into the bedroom and try it on. He was rewarded a moment or two later by the sound of the bedroom door closing as he pulled out two jars of spaghetti sauce. House? Yes, Tom. Resume play, Egypt Station. Tom opened the tomato sauce and took a sniff enjoying the smell from home, and began to groove along as the keyboard began to hammer out the beat. Starting work seemed like an important milestone, and he was still nervous about the whole thing. There was Shell to relax, but tonight seemed like enough of an occasion to merit breaking out some of his stories from Earth. As Paul started singing, he started to mouth the words. I saw you flash a smile that seemed to me to say you wanted so much more than casual conversation. I swear I caught a look before you turned away. Now I don't see the point resisting your temptation. 
It was a perfect night to give Mivere her gift. He'd been waiting for weeks to see her in the string bikini he purchased on Earth. It was dyed a dark amethyst, and over the last weeks of their trip home, he'd nearly given it to her more times than he could count. Tonight was perfect, or at least he'd lost all patience with waiting. Tom Warwick, you cannot be serious. This isn't even underwear. Tom checked the pastor and started to sing. It was definitely going to be a good night. If you come on to me, will I come on to you? If you come on to me, will I come on to you? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Yes, I will now. <laughs>